Hi, this is Dr. A, and we're going to look at diagnostic procedures of the endocrine system in this medical terminology video. So we're going to mainly look at clinical lab tests, um, and I have a few comments on that since clinical lab is my specialty. So um, blood serum tests, and I've got to first object at that as a test. So a blood serum is a type of sample, and then there are a bunch of different tests that we can do on blood serum. And so um, if we're going to be measuring substances like calcium and glucose and electrolytes and kidney function, we usually will do um, a BMP, a basic metabolic panel, or a CMP, which is a comprehensive metabolic panel. And uh, CMP also looks at certain enzymes like um, AST, ALT, and alkaline phosphatase. So it has a few more tests. Um, but you can do a, a blood serum test for a, a hormone like they have listed here, for example. So um, for cortisol, for, for example, or you can do an insulin level. Um, and so there's, there's a lot that can be done on blood serum. A fasting blood sugar, or FBS, it measures the glucose in a bloodstream after a 12-hour fast. And so this is uh, a really good test and type of sample to determine if a person has diabetes. Uh, and you'd be looking at a blood glucose greater than 126 milligrams per deciliter to determine if somebody has diabetes. So if they're above that you fasting, then you can say confidently that um, they have diabetes. A glucose tolerance test, sometimes also known as an oral glucose tolerance test, it measures blood sugar levels over several hours after a person is given a large do dose of glucose. Um, this is... Um, done to gauge the person's response to glucose. And so if the response is impaired, then um, the person could be diabetic. Uh, it is used a lot in the context of gestational diabetes, which is diabetes that happens while a person, while female is pregnant. And um, so if she has impaired glucose tolerance, then she could have gestational diabetes. And this would be uh, when normally after a load of glucose, the the glucose is going to go up, but it should be back down within two hours, back to normal. <clears throat> and if it takes longer than that for blood glucose to come back to normal, then the person could have uh, potentially diabetes. A protein-bound iodine test, uh, it measures T4 levels in the blood, but um, iodine in the hormone becomes bound to blood proteins. Although I've hardly ever seen that done, it's way more common to do a thyroid function test, which is the last one listed here, which measures the levels of T3, T4, and TSH in the blood. Uh, and even you can do free T3 and free T4. And so that looks at the TSH, which is what the pituitary produces to um, stimulate the thyroid, but then T3 and T4 is what the thyroid will produce and see what the thyroid response is. And so you can get a good uh, assessment of thyroid function. Now, um, in a radio immunoassay, um, you can use uh, it to um, measure the level of hormones in blood using radioactively tagged hormones. This is usually done to uh, assess thyroid function in, some, in somebody that's hyperthyroid that's in this, uh, this is for Graves' disease. So they use radioactively tagged iodine to assess uh, thyroid function. The total calcium level, um, and it measures the calcium in the blood. It is used to diagnose um, parathyroid or bone disorders. You can also do an ionized calcium, uh, but that's a different test than the total calcium level. Uh, to our postprandial glucose tolerance test, um, this is simply, instead of doing the oral glucose tolerance test, you just check their blood sugar two, hour, two hours after they've eaten the meal. Uh, especially if the meal contains high carbohydrates um, type of um, meal, sorry. And so if the person has normal glucose metabolism with adequate insulin production, etc., after even a high carbohydrate meal, their blood glucose two hours post meal should be back to normal. And if it's not, then you can um, you know, assume impaired glucose metabolism. And then lastly, we have a couple of diagnostic imaging tests. So a thyroid echography is an ultrasound examination of the thyroid gland, maybe looking for nodules or cysts and, and things like that. It can be 
uh, you know, helping to evaluate the thyroid and what's going on. And then a thyroid scan is a nuclear medicine imaging test that is based on the accumulation of radioactive iodine in the thyroid gland. So there you go. That wraps up for diagnosis uh, and diagnostic of the uh, endocrine system.